Last year I made a video about my struggles to find the best method for lowering the pH of our soil so that we could grow blueberry bushes. I'm sure it's still kind of small, but turns out I wasn't the only one having a hard time with that since that turned out to be one of my most popular videos. There are so many garden myths floating around out there, it can be a real challenge to find reliable, science-based information. In that video, I talked about some of the most common recommendations for lowering the pH of your soil, and I showed how most of those recommendations are not very effective. If you haven't seen that video, you can check it out with the link down below. But ultimately, I decided to use elemental sulfur for the job because there were plenty of scientific studies to back up the claims that it would lower the soil's pH and keep it low for longer than anything else. Elemental sulfur does this through a very slow process that actually takes place within the soil itself. So it's the bacteria in the soil that convert pure sulfur into sulfuric acid, which then lowers the pH of the soil. So it's not an instant chemical reaction, but rather a slow biological decomposition process that can take several months, sometimes up to a year, to convert all of the sulfur in the soil into sulfuric acid. So this process is much faster during the summer when the bacteria are more active, because just like us, they also like to hunker down and try not to do very much over the winter. But that's what makes sulfur the most resilient method for lowering the pH, because rather than adding something acidic to the soil like vinegar, the acidity is being created within the soil through a natural process over a much longer period. As I said in that other video, if your soil is naturally alkaline or above seven, you would definitely be better off growing blueberries in containers where you can completely customize the soil mix. And probably something bigger than this. This is all I had for show and tell. But no matter where you grow them, sulfur is definitely going to be useful to help you maintain that pH between 4.5 and 5.5 where blueberries are gonna be the happiest. So after sorting through all of the garden myths out there online, I decided to buy this 10 pound bag of elemental sulfur for less than 24 US dollars. That may seem like a bit of an investment up front, and it kind of is, but this is going to last for many, many years. For the first application, I only had to use about one third of a pound or 150 grams. And I did that before planting the blueberry bushes just to get that sulfur conversion process started. Then I did another application of the same amount in early April this year. And going forward, I should only have to do one application per year in the spring. So at that rate, that means it's going to take about three years to use just one pound of this 10 pound bag. So yeah, not only is sulfur the most effective method by far for lowering the pH, it's also very affordable. Now, I'm sure you really want to know how it all worked out. Did the elemental sulfur actually reduce the pH of our soil the way it's supposed to do? Well, you're in luck because I have brand new soil test results here to answer all of life's mysteries for you. Well, one anyway. So once again, here are the results from a previous soil test from before we planted the blueberries, showing that the pH of the soil was at 6.1. Now, these samples were not taken from the exact location where the blueberries are now planted, but it was from the same part of the yard, so close enough to use as a reference. So now here are the results from a new soil test that I just sent in last week. I took samples from about eight places right around the blueberries. And thank you very much. The pH is now 4.6. Bingo, that is exactly where we want it to be. In fact, it's almost too acidic. So I definitely don't want to overdo it from this. So. Before I add any more to it, I will definitely need to test the soil again in the spring, and I may need to adjust how much I'm adding to it. I should only need to add more once a year, every spring, and keep testing the soil just to make sure that it's staying exactly where we want it. Now, before I go, I do want to make a quick correction from that other video where I talked about using peat moss to lighten up the texture of our heavy clay soil. It is very good for that, 
And it is true that peat moss will only affect the pH of your soil for a very short time, so it's not an effective method for that purpose. But I did also mistakenly say that peat moss is a non-renewable resource, and that isn't true. As one of my viewers pointed out, there are severe restrictions in place for nearly all peat harvesting operations to ensure that peat is not harvested faster than it can regrow. Now there are still environmental concerns about harvesting peat from very sensitive peat bogs and how that may factor into climate change, but that's topic for a whole other video. For now, I just wanted to set the record straight for my false statement. Anyway, that is why elemental sulfur is going to be your best bet for maintaining the pH of your soil, whether you're growing blueberries directly in the ground or in a container. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a like, share it out with your friends and family, and hey, you could even subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. I'm not saying anything one way or the other, just trying to present all the options to you. So either way, maybe I'll see you next time. Stay safe out there.